it's hard to know what uh, aspect of Jerry was the most important. He was a complex person, a uh, complex musician, highly gifted, and uh, modest enough that we all adored him. I think I think he had a lot of friends, a lot of people who enjoyed him uh, very much. And he made uh, for 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 we who work with Jerry day in day out. There was no agony to it. It was it was it was a delight. When I worked with him, I was really green. I hadn't seen that many different people. Now that I've seen a lot of conductors, a lot of people working with professionals and with children, the thing that really strikes me, especially at the end of his career, is I never saw his energy flag for an instant. Never, not once. I never saw him just sort of sag. I, I never saw him lose his place or lose the tempo of the rehearsal or lose the attention of the boys. He allowed me and helped me to really believe in myself that I could go way beyond where, where I already was. He was like a father and a brother and an uncle and, uh, and a colleague. Incredible, dynamic, powerful presence. But I always had the feeling that he was working for something bigger than himself and his own ego. It was an amazing presence to be around. When he was a child, his parents insisted that he practice, which bored him to death. So he improvised, and they didn't realize that he wasn't practicing. Um, so in a way, he created his own venue for freedom. He felt very free when he improvised. Jerry Hancock was in an extraordinarily talented um, and expressive uh, improviser at the organ. And for all his years, uh, having inherited uh, an instrument that perhaps uh, was something of a, an aesthetic compromise, he made that instrument sound quite remarkable and unique. Jerry had a, had a way of, of uh, bringing the best out of, of organs, that's for sure. Inspiring and uplifting and, and always related to text, seemed to me. Of course, the hymns, he followed the text with an eagle's eye, and you could hear it. Those moments where you got, you finally got in the choir stall and it's just going and going and you don't know where it's gonna go, but you know it's gonna get back home and boom, right when the last priest stepped up, it was time to sing that last, <laughs> last stanza of that hymn. That was way too short for that procession. So like, <laughs> so those types of moments where you're like, and during those moments where uh, right before uh, communion or, you know, or during communion after we've done our anthems, you know, he just sit and play and, you know, you just kind of sit back and listen and you're just transported. It's, it's literally like going to another world. It was, it was awe inspiring. The guy was a genius. He was a genius. For the liturgy, of course, he created uh, not just improvisation, but uh, many choral works for the choir here. 
um, but probably more prolifically for other choirs elsewhere in the US who asked Jerry to write festive anthems or sets of canticles uh, that were used in Atlanta or Dallas or Louisville or Columbus, Ohio or San Francisco. So there's a, there's a huge uh, legacy of, of choral music that doesn't often see the light of day um, and to a degree has been a little bit neglected here uh, over many years and Jerry himself didn't seem to do an enormous amount of his own music. So it's been a very interesting voyage of discovery to try and collate a lot of the material uh, and music that he wrote for other places and much of that has comprised this current recording project along with some stalwarts music that he wrote for the boys here at St Thomas. I as his wife loved going to Cape Cod. He had no interest as, as a a man who had been raised in Lubbock, Texas with sandstorms. He was allergic to sand and uh, that kind of living. And I, I loved sand and bare feet and water and swimming. And there was no argument about it, but let's face it, I went to St. Thomas. <laughs> and so he came to the Cape. <laughs> that was the deal. And Jerry brought his compositions to Cape Cod. You know, you say the words Jerry Hancock and people either think master improvisationalist or, you know, game changer in the choral world with men and boys singing. You don't often hear like, oh yeah, that, that guy could write a piece. I mean, everybody, I mean, People could whistle uh, Deep River. I mean, you know, every time we sing it here, I could see people in the congregation mouthing with us. This is a gem. Um, but a lot of this music is very new to us uh, because he composed it after he left here for a lot of people. So like a, a lot of universities or choirs. So everywhere from Texas to New Jersey, he was, you know, being commissioned these pieces. And it's great that we're doing them because now people will be able to hear them that are fans of his. You know, if you're a fan of Jerry Hancock, you're gonna want to have this in your library. You're just going to want to. I've known about Jerry Hancock and, and Judy since I was a kid. You know, we were always we were listening to the Even Songs broadcast in the UK and there was always this sort of thing that we, you would get it from Exeter and Gloucester and Westminster Abbey and Manchester and all the rest of it in the UK and then probably once a year there'd be this this Even Song from St Thomas Fifth Avenue, which is to a youngster kind of felt as if it was the other side of the world. Um so I've always known what's been going on here. Um I have to say, I didn't know any of Jerry's music. It's not generally, I don't think, in the English cathedral repertoire. Um, strikes me that some of it should be. So yeah, it's a great honor to come over here and, and have the opportunity to document what goes on in this building, which is unique in America and has a unique value to the musical canon of the place. Um, and yeah, to get amongst it. This music, we would have missed it if, if it hadn't been for Jeremy. So like, I'm thankful to him for finding it. I mean, like I've done a couple of pieces with uh, St. Bart's Choir. Uh, Bill Trofka was a huge fan of Jerry Hancock. So he would dust off a piece or two. And like, I've done a couple of these pieces with him. I know I have, because they're just too familiar. And I know I didn't do it here. But I'm like, I always say to him, I was like, where did you find this? And I was like, oh, you know, a friend of mine sent this to me because <laughs> Jerry wrote this for his choir. It's like, when was this? And, and of course, like it would be, 2005, you know, 2007. I was like, this man was still working. He was still, still, still hustling. <laughs> Perhaps some of the greatest occasions in Jerry Hancock's time here uh, are immortalized on recordings. One can find them on YouTube and there were many CDs made in, in Jerry's time. And Christmas and Easter, those great festive occasions were wonderful opportunities to expand the music 
and uh, he often did so with the addition of brass. So we have used a brass quartet and timpani for a number of items, particularly the, the well-known and well-loved Mr. Resurrectionis of, of Jerry's that he wrote uh, one Easter. Um, so the brass uh, and this new organ feature on a number of tracks on this, this new album. The mass, which we recorded yesterday with Brass, I can so easily imagine him working with the boys and just getting them to just really enjoy it. Really, really not just sing the right notes, but really that he wrote it to be sung, kind of sing-songy and, and to encourage the boys to do that. so grateful to Dr. Philcell for putting this together. Uh, what a fantastic idea, an, an absolute classy idea to come in in his first year here to set up such a beautiful homage to Jerry. He was a genius, and it took me years to realize it because Jerry was so down to earth, he wouldn't have told you that he was a genius. But after a while, you figure it out. He was a genius, a lovable genius. <laughs> yeah, he's missed. He's missed a lot. His outreach was astounding. I mean, just going out and working with, you know, semi-professional and amateur choirs and i put amateur in quotes because like these were really some really good singers and to hear from these people like you know oh gosh you know i remember i was 14 and he came and worked with our choir and you know i remember oh you know i was a soprano with the professionals and we got to work with jerry and it was it, to hear stories like that and how much they miss him and how much of an impact that he had on them young people especially i mean like you know i'm a you know black kid from philadelphia like what am i, what am I doing here jerry hancock i think deep in his heart jerry knew that he had a special gift a special gift from god it's a way of thought and he, and he he lived with that gift modestly so it was it was easy to love him in spite of his gifts <laughs> i must say his life was too short but but it was the life he wanted and i think he had a great life